Yeah, and with Dr. Dre, so I met him on a humbug, man. I was after, you know, I made money and was doing that. I was still DJing in clubs, in the biggest clubs in L.A. And so a buddy of mine brought Dre to the house like, hey, this dude, I, you, you know, I started being, I was in an R&B group and I was producing music and writing it and stuff. So he had me play it for dude and he said, come fuck with me. So I was with him. I, I got with Dre in 89. I've been with him ever since. Wow. Talk to him today. Now, I wanted to ask you about that. I was reading online that you actually did some work on the first Chronic. Yes, sir. I mixed that album with Dre, and I produced Stranded on Death Row and worked on all them songs with them. Man, that's major, bro. That's like one of the greatest, if not the greatest, hip-hop album. That and yeah. Doggy Style, man. What was it like working on the Chronic? Shit, the side day I worked on Doggy Style, too? Yeah. The chronic was like just a it was like a cloud of smoke in the fucking studio the whole time. Like like you see the smoke. So like my buddy mm. was a, on a footnote. He was like, I'm gonna make me now. We didn't set out to make no weed record. It's not a weed record. It's the chronic. It's the dopest shit going. That's why we called it that. Dre was like, I want to call my record dope. You can't call it cocaine. That's whack. You know, the chronic. That was what was hot on the streets here, so yeah, we called it that. But uh, so it was, man. Let me tell you, bro. Some of the greatest talent I've ever seen together. When I listen to those records and the people on them and how good they are and how they sound today, like man, I'm just blessed to have been a part of that, bro. I'm, I thank Dre and God and everyone else for allowing me to be in that. I didn't have to be there. Yeah. Y'all made history with that change, how people even viewed and listened to music and make music, man. That's a phenomenal album. Thank you so much, man. Still to this day, it trips me out when people say that. <laughs> we set out to brothers change and music, they were, they were too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Now, what was it like uh, connecting with Snoop and working on Doggy Style, man? So... The whole Chronic and Doggy Style was like one album. We was working on wow. the Chronic, and then we had to go on tour. So we took a SSL on tour with us, a big-ass diesel. It's called Westwood One. So we was intending on working on Snoop's album while we was on tour. But Daz ended up working because we never worked. We was always fucking around or working on the show. So we come back, and they tell us it's like January, February, they tell us we want to, and then when we come back in February, they play them. We went to the studio and did what's my what's my name? Who am I? You know, mm -hmm. Snoop Doggy Dog. That one. A went straight to the radio. We had to come back off the tour to finish the album. <laughs> so we finished man. the record. Let me tell you that record, man. Okay, so we had done the crime. So it's so boom. So we hot, right? So Snoop's the next. He hot. Jimmy Iovine and and and, and uh, Suge Knight. We finished the record. Like we have, we're, <laughs> we're mixing, so we're finalizing. I'm Dre and I are arranging the order of the songs. I have to actually place them. It's a tape. Like, imagine an actual tape. You ever seen a tape? You know what a tape is. How old are you? I'm 37. So you know what a tape is. Yeah. You ever seen a tape? So they have yeah, cassette yeah. tapes. But they have real to real taste. So we had these big real to real tastes we used to use. They're like, like scotch tape. So anyway, you gotta cut the tape with a razor blade to connect the songs. It ain't so editing in Pro Tools. If you ever wonder why when you gotta cut something to give you a razor blade, it's because we use a razor blade in the studio. It's not because wow. they could use scissors, you know what I mean, to cut to let you know. It's easier to let you know scissors cut. That's more so. I'm cutting this thing together with a razor blade, right? We got this. This is the album. This is the work. You got it? Like, it's in the sink. Don't fuck it up, right? Like, this right. is the time when you can't make no mistakes. So, Suge is over here, and Jimmy Ivey is right here. And I'm sitting in the chair, and I'm rocking back and forth about to make a cut. You know, I'm going to slice it. and Because we like for our songs to fade out, and the next one start on beat. So it's like a mixtape, but you kind of pick up on it, but you don't. It's real smooth. You that's why people listen to our albums all the way through. Oh, yeah. You no listen doubt. to Doggy Style, you just play it. You listen to Chronic, you just play it. You might skip one song. So 
Uh, I'm cutting. I've got the razor blade, right? A razor blade, okay? We got a tape that's worth, how many records did we sell? Seven million? So that tape right there is worth at least, I'm looking at $100 million in my hand, right? Sure, like, hey, man, you know, we need this, man. You guys got to move faster. We in a hurt, man. We got, and then Jimmy's going, we got planes on the tarmac, $15,000 an hour, and we got trucks, and where everybody's waiting, the record is behind, and Shug's, so I look at Shug, you know, Shug, right? He's being very threatening, and Jimmy is trying to be in his way threatening as a nice Jewish rich guy, so I looked at both of them, I was like, you guys could do this, <laughs> you want to do it, or you just want to leave me alone, and Dre start busting up, right? He's like, damn, because them dudes, they can pressure me not None of them signed my checks. I worked for Dre. So I really couldn't figure right. out what Suge or Jimmy had to say. I would be like, Dre, what am I supposed to do? Like, I'm that dude. Like, the general is here. I got the gun. You want me to shoot him or him? Dre, fuck the general. <laughs> That's my general. So mm -hmm. anyway, they backed up off me. It was hilarious. They was like, you know, really trying to house a cat. I don't believe in, you know, I don't get nervous. I, I get, I can't wait to do it. Like, I guess anxious. Like, okay, we're about to go on stage. I want to get on that motherfucker. I don't want to, I'm not, oh, I'm nervous. No, nah, I'm like, where's that? Stage? What? Let's go. Turntables? You ready? I, you got music too? I can just, all I need is my hands. You got music? You got that? I'm, I'm ready. So, you know, we just love making music and doing this thing. And so we just do it for ourselves. We always have it's for us, and then we let other people hear it, and they like it. Oh yeah, oh yeah, man! Y'all did y'all thing on them. <laughs>